Hi again. So this is the third video in this series for lesson 3.1 on D flip flops and sequential logic. And in this video, I'm going to take things a step further with a D flip flop. We're going to talk about some additional inputs and modifications we can make to that D flip flop that was discussed in the previous video. Okay. And in particular, we're going to be talking about asynchronous inputs. Okay. So synchronous means time based. It means that synchronous would be dependent on the clock. That's what we've talked about in the previous video, synchronous inputs, things that depend on that external clock to actually change. So if that's what synchronous means, asynchronous would mean then doesn't care about the clock. In other words, we have a way to override the clock at any particular point in time if we have asynchronous inputs. Okay. Before we get into that, though, we do need to talk about a quick little thing that we kind of skipped over in the previous video, and that's the fact that the, the the D flip flop that we used in that previous video was the one on the top. It was positive edge triggered, which meant that D would pass the signal through to Q, zero to zero or one to one, anytime we had a positive edge for the external clock. It was going from zero to one. However, we do have the ability, we have chips that exist that have a negative edge trigger instead. And the only difference that you're going to see is that it's going to have a bubble. Remember, this is an input, not an output. So bubbles mean not gates, right? Negation. And then, so in this case, what it means is it's going to do the opposite of the rising edge, which is a negative edge. So that means anytime the clock goes from one down to zero is whenever the D would pass the signal through to Q. D would pass the signal through to Q. So notice it acts the exact same way. It's just when is it going to function is a little bit different. Okay, so you got to pay attention to that. Do we have a positive or negative edge trigger? The triangle means edge triggered. The bubble tells you it's negative. No bubble means it's positive. Okay, those are the synchronous inputs that we're dealing with on the flip-flop. So let's shift gears and talk about the asynchronous inputs. Okay. Asynchronous inputs, and you'll probably want to pause and write this stuff down and then unpause. So I'll wait for you to do that. Okay, now that you have all this written down, what we're talking about are the PR and CLR uh, inputs that you see at the top and bottom. Those weren't there before. Okay, PR stands for preset. And basically, whatever happens here, if I activate this preset, okay, we got to talk about how to do that later on, but if I activate the preset, then Q, regardless of what's happening with the clock, Q becomes a one instantly. It overrides the clock. Therefore, PR, preset, is known as an asynchronous input. It does, we don't have to wait for the clock to have the rising or falling edge. It just does its thing automatically. Okay? It sets Q, again, to one. Clear. If clear is activated, if I activate the clear input, then no matter what happens and no matter where the clock is, regardless of whether we have an edge triggered or not, Q turns off. So we can set to one or set to zero using preset or clear, regardless of what's happening with the rest of the circuit. Okay, that's very important. So say if I had a clock that was running and I wanted to say, you know what, set that thing back to zero, like a stopwatch, that's what I could do with preset or clear, the clear in that case to set it back to zero. So what the truth table says is this. Notice that there are bubbles here. Bubbles here. The bubbles here mean that we have active low inputs. Active low inputs in this particular situation. Not every flip-flop is active low, but the one on the screen right now is. And what that means is that if I ever send a zero into it, the bubble indicates a not, right? So if I ever send a zero into this, I activate preset. Let's go down here and look at the truth table. When I have a zero into preset, as long as the clear is a one, then I don't care what the clock and the D flip-flop input have. I'm going to send a one to Q. Remember, these are don't care conditions. So if preset is a zero, I turn this to a one no matter what. I've activated the preset. If I activate the clear by sending a zero into it, then I don't care what D or clock say. I'm going to send out a zero to Q. I'm going to turn off Q. So preset activated turns Q on. Clear activated turns Q off. 
we do have a situation down low. What happens if I take preset and clear and set them both to zero? What happens if I activate both preset and clear? Well, that's an illegal condition, and it's what it's going to do is you're going to get a one out of both the Q and the Q not. It's something that you'll never run across, and you should never, ever, 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 ever do with your circuits. Now, I don't have to activate these. So if preset and clear are not activated, in other words, if they're both one, if preset and clear are both one, then what's going to happen is D is going to pass on its signal to Q as expected earlier. So the top two rows look like our original truth table. And then down underneath, we're talking about what happens if we activate preset, what activate, happens if we activate clear, what happens if we activate both, and we're never going to do that. Okay, easy way to do this is just to, to build. Okay, so I've actually given you this circuit to play around with. And again, this looks complicated, but it's really not that complicated. Let's hit play. Let's figure out what's going on. Okay, right now, you'll notice that preset is tied to a switch that's controlled by the letter P, and it's running to 5 volts at this point in time. There is a bubble here on the preset, which means a zero, a ground signal coming in, is what would activate it. So in other words, right now, I am not using preset. Likewise, for clear, this thing is going down right now, and it is connected to 5 volts as well. So I'm not using clear right now. In other words, what's happening is this. Whenever I flip D, there, okay, the clock finally hit here, and so it switched. I switch it down, wait for the clock to hit. There it goes, okay, Q turned off, Q not turned on, right? So D passed the zero through to Q, okay? But notice what happens is this, it doesn't matter what's going on right now, the fact that D is low, if I go and I take preset and I activate it by flipping it to ground, okay? I'm gonna activate this thing by flipping it to ground. Instant, boom, done. Right now, I deactivated it, it goes back down. Boom, done. Okay, I can override the clock by activating preset by setting it to zero. Zero, I know again because of the bubble. Okay, down here now, let's deactivate preset and let's talk about this. D right now is sending a high signal through a one, so this thing is going to stay in place. If I drop this down to zero, notice after the clock hits, it goes up to one. Down to zero. Okay, we're waiting for the clock on each of these, right? But if this is one and I activate clear, no matter where the clock is or whether the clock is hitting, instantly we're going to see Q turns off. I can reset it to zero at any given time. Therefore, preset, clear, asynchronous, not time based, not driven by the external clock. They are not synchronous inputs. They are asynchronous inputs, okay? That's the whole idea with the asynchronous input. So, again, you're going to be asked to use some timing circuits and to determine what Q is going to be at any given time. The process is going to be exactly the same. The first thing you do is you go look here. We have a positive edge triggered flip-flop in this example. So I go to all the positive edges and I draw a dotted line that goes straight up. I will expect to see dotted lines in your homework. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circumstances. The next thing that I do is in each of those cases, I need to go through before I look at D, I need to go make sure that the preset and the clear aren't interfering. So here, Preset not being used, not being used, not being used, but here, oh, it's being used, okay? So the instant the preset drops down to zero, that is the instant the preset is activated, Q shoots up to one, even though it's not timed up with their dotted lines from the clock. That one is going to hold in place this entire time. Nothing else can happen while preset is activated. So it doesn't matter that this clock hits in the middle. We're not even, we're not even paying attention to it right now, okay? So this is one, this is one, this is one. So I know that I have a straight line from here to right here, okay, where Q is a one. Now, that's the only time that preset is being activated, okay? The rest of the time, it's a one. Down here with clear, I go to here and I go, wait a second, this little blip right here, okay, even though it's short, what happens is no matter what Q was at that point in time, I know that I activated the clear, which means Q needs to be a zero from here to here. So at this point in time, I have two dot dash or two solid lines, segment from here to here at zero, and a segment from here to here that's one. Now the rest of those times then, the rest of these times, I'm going to go and I'm going to look at D. Preset and clear are not being activated, so D is a high. That means Q is going to be high. Okay, here D is low. 
Q is going to be low. Okay, and I go through and I follow each of the dotted lines and I determine whether the signal is changing or not. And you should get something that looks like this. So that is the expectation for this homework assignment when you're doing timing diagrams is to be able to fill in and figure out what is Q going to be at any given point in time. So that's a lot of information to take in. A couple other quick notes. I just want you to see here, quick slides at the end. We do have different kinds of flip-flops. Primarily, we're going to use the 74 LS74, the top option here, okay? That's called the dual positive edge triggered D flip-flop. Dual meaning Q and Q naught, two outputs. It's a D flip-flop because we have one input, D. It's positive edge triggered. I know that because there's no bubble here. There's just a straight triangle. With preset, clear, and complementary outputs. It's got a preset. It's got a clear. And it's got complementary outputs. Dual, by the way, is because there's two of those on the single physical chip that you can put on a breadboard. And for, and for uh, next videos, we're not ready for it yet. Next videos, though, we'll learn about a different kind of flip-flop called the JK flip-flop. And we'll also learn about what's called the quad latch, although we're really not going to focus on it in this particular class. Okay. The D flip-flop, you will eventually need the schematic for that whenever we go to breadboard. You'll see, again, it's dual because there are two flip-flops on each one of those chips. Okay, You can keep this if you want or print it off, um, but you're going to have this available through Google anytime you need to breadboard with it. Hopefully that makes sense. Those are three pretty long videos. Your job now is to go to the homework and complete the timing diagrams and everything related to the D flip-flop stuff. Ignore JK for now.